matters is how you play and the ball tips up how you play in SEC games and that, that's what we're concerned with getting better every day. Alabama does that as good as anybody in the country. This is going to be a fun team both tonight and throughout the season to watch. And what a scene right now. The triple digit tied again. How does an Alabama team still in the fight? Oh, mercy! Turn the ladder! Jumped off the top of it! How strong you have to be in this game. Watch this. That's a, a man's game right there. Their culture is toughness. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Nate Oat Show presented by Tri Green Equipment along with the head coach of the Crimson Tide. I'm Chris Stewart. Coach, last week we were trying to rush through the Tennessee highlights to get to the Auburn highlights because you, you didn't have a great game followed by a terrific outcome. I was frankly concerned how your team might respond. They turned around, had a great matchup against LSU, and then you go on the road and really gutted one out against Georgia. Terrific week for your squad. Yeah, no, it was a good week. There was not 40 minutes of highlights in both games, for sure, <laughs> but it ended up being two good wins. You know, at LSU, the offense was really clicking well. The defense wasn't where it needed to be. Georgia, shoot our offense. <laughs> disappeared in the first half. We we're not accustomed to that, but our guys were tough enough and stayed in it. Offense came together in the second half. We got enough stops. That was a big road win after being down like we were for sure. Coach, let's get into the highlights first of all for the victory at LSU. A great win for your team and not surprising. Highlights begin with Mark Sears. Yeah, he's been really good. I mean, even he, you know, he didn't shoot it well. Shoot, he was SEC player of the week and went one for ten from three, but still managed to Average over 20 points a game. He can get downhill, get to the rim. He gets fouled. He gets to the free throw line. He's tough, physical. He doesn't miss free throws. So he's proven he can score all kinds of different ways. So it was nice against Georgia. He got back to making a few threes for us. It's always a little better. But some of these finishes, I mean, showing how strong he is, showing what kind of finishing package he has, and he gets fouled, goes to the line. All three of our guards this LSU game almost had 20. You know, Aaron... Trelly and uh, Mark, all of them, you know, Wrightsell's really been shooting it well. I I don't even want to mention his free throw percentage on the year because we might jinx him, <laughs> but kid, kid hasn't missed a free throw all year. He's like, I just looked at it. He's 24 or 24. So, you know, he's shooting the three well. He's playing tough on D. He's getting the line, make, making free throws. So he's been good. Five of 10, by the way, for Reitzel in that game against LSU from three-point range. And Aaron Estrada does so many things for you, Coach, but, man, finishes at the rim about as well as anybody. No, he does, and he's one of those guys that, man, I hope he gets a triple-double this year because he's close. I mean, what, you know, he was real close against Liberty. He was close. I think he had, what, 18, 7, and 6 this game. You know, he's right there. He does a little bit of everything. He's tough. He finishes well. He's shooting it well. Starting to step up and lead more. He's a lot more vocal, getting comfortable. In the, uh, you got some Max Sharkowski you gotta, highlights. you got to work, man. I, Max no, in when you it. can. It's fantastic. Max, yeah, Max is a big-time walk-on. He adds a lot to our culture. That was great. He got to score in that game. 21 for Sears again. Perfect at the stripe. Latrell making 50% from three-point range. We saw Aaron had 18 as well. Man, six rebounds, seven assists in that game. Indicative of what your team is, Coach. Balance and amazing. Six times this year already you've eclipsed the 100-point mark, and that is the most, I think, in Bama history for a single season. we still got, hopefully, two full months to go for this season. Yeah, shoot. We should have had 100 two more times if I'd have... <laughs> Left the uh, scholarship guys in a little. I think we had 99 and 98, right? Oregon and uh, maybe Mercer, was it? I think so. So, yeah, we're scoring the ball well. If we can get our defense up, uh, hopefully it's not the last time we score 100 either. But we got to get our defense uh, a little bit better, keep scoring it well on offense. We, you know, shoot one more game, we're halfway through league play. If we can be halfway through league play with at least a game lead on everybody, I, I like where we're at. Like it when we win. Get a chance to take you all access for the Bama victory over LSU. It can only be viewed as an opportunity for Nate Oatsby. And they have been dominant. Dominant inside Coleman Coliseum. Right with three. Boy, he looked good in three game warmups. Shooting the basketball. Estrada inbounding. That's it for the play. Chance to run for Bama. Estrada. Off the window it is. It's a 6 nothing. Alabama.
Alabama run. To the rim, off the glass and in with a move. To Diamante, oh, throws it home. Why not? Man, yeah, why not? And he goes to Nelson. Slams it in, he is fouled. Step through, finish. Wow! Starnowski on the drive to the rim. Oh. As the graphic showed you, the Nate Oates Show is indeed presented by Tri-Green Equipment. Coach, after two big wins at home, Auburn and LSU, you go on the road and play a Georgia team. That's Athens has been a tough place for a lot of teams to play. Alabama certainly no different, but your team found a way to gut one out and grind one out when you're down by 17, I think, with 22 minutes to go in that contest. 16 with 22 minutes to play in the game. Yeah, we, we didn't play particularly well. Started out down 17-2. to two. I yeah. think we scored two points the first about eight, eight and a half minutes of this game, which is not typical of us. You know, we're used to be scoring it pretty well. So shots weren't dropping. I think we missed our first 10 threes. So we had to find other ways, you know, kept ourselves in it enough to where it was only 14 at the half. Could have been much worse. Didn't shoot. I think it was still about 11 with like nine minutes to go or something. And then our guys really started to make a run kind of in that last 10 minutes, last six minutes of the game. And somehow ended up winning by nine, like after we were down by as much as we were, you know, down 14. The second half was great. I was scoring by 23 in the second half. But, you know, we, we got to find ways to win when, when we're not shooting it particularly well. And I think, you know, we got to the free throw line. We made some free throws. We, we got out rebounded bad but we turned we turned them over like right. which we hadn't really been able to do much so we're showing we can find different ways to win different games grant nelson a big game coach in this one 20 points for him but his last two field goals awfully big but he's becoming a real presence around the rim as well no he really is i mean he's you know at north dakota state that's where he played a lot of his games down in the post more we, we played him a lot more on the perimeter but now we're starting to mix him back in the post a little bit more get some confidence but shoot he he, he hit those two big threes we got him some confidence yeah. going he hit those big threes late but yeah there's tie one. game when he hits these two back to back with less than two minutes no, to go open coach. the whole game up in the last two minutes he's definitely not a frame of moment i was super happy for him like see he's shooting it really well in practice he's shooting like 40 percent from three in practice so to see him make them in the game is great sears coach wow. he had six points with 11 and a half 12 minutes to go in this game that would end up with 23. Yes, sir. Yeah, he he, he came over to me, Coach. Oh, we gotta get, I gotta get myself going for the team. I was like, tell yes, me, sir. Tell me what you want. <laughs> yeah, like I'm all for it. <laughs> yeah, you're averaging 20. I'm all for it. Getting you going. Like, tell me what you need. <laughs> so he got himself going a little bit there. That that one break when Estrada pushed it super fast at him in mm -hmm. the corner. Right. Yeah, that's the pace he want to play with. Ryland's been good too. Ryland's been playing really well here, really since shoot after the Tennessee game to be honest with you he had a three to tie it at 64 coach and I think that was the first time you'd been tied since the national anthem in that one yeah that was that one right there in the yeah. corner that was, that was that was the first time we tied it so it was a big three should have even could have been one to be honest with you but yeah he he played well he made some tough finishes Sears got downhill the rim Estrada had another quiet really good game so you know we got some good production from some of our guys that you know we need we need our main guy's been playing pretty well. And Trelly, Trelly didn't score all that great this game, but he was great on defense. So we, we were starting to get some consistent effort from some of those guys, consistent production for sure. Guys understanding their roles and fulfilling them. Got a lot of highlights to show. Let's go all access again as the Tide wins on the road in Athens. shot off in time and everything else has gone their way 41 27 georgia leading at intermission you know, somebody in the hall was saying we, we can win this game there's a no stop we are going to win this game there's no we can we're winning this game sears nice delay Bama is back to within a dozen nice job defensively all the way jumper good from eight feet sears going to the basket puts it up off the glass and in mess 
wrestled his way to the rim. Mark Sears, a huge bucket there. He's only got eight. Maybe that'll get him going as the tide is back to within 11. Here's still Wenzel, and he does get it. Luttrell to the hoop. And Alabama is back to within five. Four, three, and it is good. And Bama is to within three with six minutes to go. Sears with it. Around to Estrada. Estrada going left. Estrada puts it up. Started with defense. Yes, Alabama's making shots, but getting it done defensively. Sears to Nelson. Do it again. He does. Oh, mercy. Let's get out of here. Bama, an 85-76 win over the Georgia Bulldogs. Together, you got we win. Together, we win. win. It's just hard to guard Mark Sears, man. Like, I guard him in practice. Around to Sears, can't you shoot three? He either gonna get to the paint. Sears takes it himself. And a really impressive drive there by Sears. The lefty. Get fouled, make the layup. Alabama has come out on fire. That's just way for And make the right read, so. To Sears for three, yes! Yes, sir! To Sears for three. Coach, when he was coming out of Muscle Shoals High School, I'm not sure anybody envisioned that he could be a guy that one day would be a major contender for SEC Player of the Year and do the things that he's done with his career. Did you even recruit him coming out of high school? I didn't. Obviously, I didn't know what I was doing, but no, I wasn't the only. Well, you weren't the only one. <laughs> yeah, he didn't really have any I major offers. That's why I went to Ohio. So, But when he put the numbers up he did at Ohio, you know, you got to pay attention to that because I was in that league. That's not a bad league. And our better players at Buffalo 100% could have played here and played really well here. So, you know, I, yeah, I, you know, it's like the knock on him was maybe not quite athletic enough, didn't quite shoot it well enough. Is he a point guard or two guard? Kind of a tough two guard. But, shoot, he's turned himself into an elite shooter. Right. He's figured out how to be a point guard. He, he's he's worked hard on his game to the point. I mean, shoot, he, I think he's I think he's got screwed being not being on the Kuzi Award list. But he's one of the best point guards in the country right now. I mean, we're if we can win this game Saturday, halfway through SEC play, we'll be in first place alone. Regardless of what happens Saturday, we'll be in first place in the SEC halfway through league play. Right. So and he's our leading scorer. He's leading the SEC in scoring. He's he, he works hard, as hard as any kid I've had. He's in the gym all the time. He, he's turned himself into a scorer, shooter. He's always been a scorer. Patrick Mahomes changed the way of thinking for the quarterback position in the NFL that a smaller guy can get it done. Steph Curry, I think, has probably done that in the NBA. I'm not saying that he's a Steph Curry type, but does an undersized guy now like Mark Sears get more consideration in the league than he maybe would have five years ago? Probably. They, 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 shoot, they value shooting in that league, and, and the game's so much more wide open. Kind of like we play. I mean, he's right. looking really good in our system because we keep it so open with other shooters around him, and he's so physical of a driver. With how they open the lane up in the NBA and with how much they value shooting, he's got a chance. He's got to guard better, rebound better. He's got to do that tough stuff because he's smaller. Those smaller guards, they really want to see like a – you know, you kind of look around the league at those guards that are kind of six foot and under, and they're really tough. But – for sure, it, if he's going to play in the NBA, now is the time. You know, back before when they wanted all their guards 6'5", 6'6", because it's all physical. Sure. It's not a smash mouth as it was once uh, back in the day. Yeah, better learn foreign language back then if he was going to continue to play professionally at the guard slot. When we come back, we'll take a look at some of the things that are going on with the Bama basketball team. Stay with us. More than 8 Oats show presented by Tri-Green Equipment coming up right here. All right, Coach, this is the segment of the show. Much like most of the others, I have no clue what's going on, but I truly am not exactly sure what this is. We've got some team superlatives, though, to look at, so we'll, we'll check it out and find out together 
exactly what, oh, here we go. Most likely on the team to only eat dessert. Shoot. That's a good question. Rylan Griffin started the whole crumble cookies. Now every road trip, if there's a crumble cookies. Yeah, notice so that. So I'm going to throw him out for that because he's the one that brought crumble cookies to the team. And well, they're great. That's a good call. We're in our fat loss contest now, so I can't participate. But when I when I can, they're great. Of course not. Uh, Most likely to be an elite football player. Besides you. Mo Diabate. I think yeah. he loves physicality. He likes to hit people, you know. Maybe make him a DN tight end. Mm -hmm. Got some speed out there, some size. That's what I'd say. Uh, I wouldn't want to catch him if I was coming on the edge. No. Uh, most likely 100 meter dash. Meter dash. Ooh, fastest guy there. I think Sears, when he wants to go, he's got pretty good top end speed. He's, Put the ball in his hand and let him go. It's faster yeah, no, that way. He's very fast. Like you look at the top end speeds with our connects on, he's up there. Most likely to be a gym rat. That's, man, we got a lot of them. I mean, honestly, like, Sears, Estrada's in the gym all the time. He works super hard. Sears works really hard. Those guys both get in there late at night. Right. Griffin's got... Ooh, most... Uh, that, that's no question. Ryan Pannon. They yeah, got, I, had, like I knew that 2 a.m., 3 a.m. <laughs> it's absurd, yeah. actually. Like, do you ever get, some, do you ever get any sleep? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, you don't, that computer goes everywhere with them. <laughs> it does. Most likely to have straight A's. On the team, I Ma would assume Max so. Sharnowski. Yeah. Walk on Max. He's just to spell his last name. You gotta have yeah, he's pretty good. Gotta, you gotta have some spelling skills. Max is a great student. Yeah, most likely to be singing. Most likely mm. to be maybe Nick Pringle. Seems like he likes to dance a little bit. Like mm. have a little fun. Yep. Yeah. All right. Not, uh, not me for sure. I'm not a good singer. Okay. Most likely to crack a joke. Could be. Control is not here. Yeah. Uh, so dad jokes big, are retired. Yeah. Who's the big jokester now? Preston Murphy on staff, on the team. Shoot, I don't know. Maybe okay. Nick Pringle again. Okay. Pringle, Pringle likes to have a little bit of fun. All right. And we will... <laughs> uh, Alabama radio... Uh, That's Stipe. That Stipe, is he, he's a radio personality? Well, he's part of the crew. <laughs> That's <laughs> part of the crew. I'm, I, I'm I don't know. I never, listen, I never get to listen to the radio. I'm coaching the game all the time. Who is it? I'm guessing it's Chris Stewart. That's why they put it up here. Yep. So you have some really bad jokes? And the, and the most crack good jokes, too, because I'm probably telling more jokes than anybody else. Do you tell a lot of jokes on, on air? What's your best joke? We'll talk during the break. <laughs> when we come back, we'll take a look at what's next here on the Nate Oates Show. Life in the SEC, Coach, doesn't get any easier even though you're at home. Mississippi State owes you one. It was a tough game in Starkville. And then you go on the road. Auburn owes you one after getting the Tigers in T-Town. Yeah, so we start when we're playing teams a second time. And like, who can make the biggest adjustments, most improvements from game one to game two? I think sometimes if you lost that first game, your guys are a little more motivated make the adjustments. We, we still have to make adjustments even though we won. It, was, it certainly wasn't like we played perfect. So, you know, our guys got to be mature enough to understand there was lots of things we did in the game that need to be better because they're going to make improvements. So can we be mature enough to do that? You know, these, these home games, if you're going to win the league, you got to win these home games. So it was a big game. We got to win here if we're going to have a chance to win the league. At the time you got it, Coach, I thought maybe that was your best win there in Starkville, and that, that was only surpassed by this one, perhaps. 100%. It was definitely our best win, and then the Auburn game uh, became a little better because Auburn was at the top of the league and playing well. So, you know, going into Auburn is not an easy place to play. They're going to be ready for us after losing here. So we got to be ready going that one. And again, even though we won, there's lots we did wrong in that game that we've got to correct. So we got to be a mature group that can – understand you still need to learn from your wins just like you learn from your losses look forward to it coach look forward to those games and then talking to you next week right here on the nato show presented by tri-green equipment